Hey guys, so we've got some more stuff to open uh, today, so it's sort of a post bag. Some of the stuff I have already opened, unfortunately, but it's because I was a bit too excited. So uh, I'll clear the stuff away and we'll get started. So first off, we've got the TEA5767, which is a little FM radio module. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a closer up look at this. Now this is just, uh, it's a very common module you can buy these days. I put one in my boom box that I made a while back. I'll put a link to the, the video just like there maybe, or there, I don't know how to do it, but we'll figure it out. So they're pretty tiny little modules and um, they've got a little crystal on board. You can communicate with them very, very easily using an Arduino. So we're, we're gonna play with that. But to go along with it, we've got these. I picked up a couple of speakers so we can listen to the audio coming out. Now they're not the same, uh, but it's because I just want to see which ones are going to work out better. I think these are probably going to sound reasonably similar. Uh, one's a 3 watt speaker and this one appears to be another 3 watt speaker, but one's larger than the other, so we're going to see what they sound like. I picked up an extra SD card for my Raspberry Pi. I realized that I'd ruined one installation and the problem with that is once I'd installed sort of the, uh, the VNC stuff and I'd sorted out the SSH stuff, I'd connected it to my Wi-Fi, I should have backed up and created a, uh, another SD card with that image on so that if I messed around with the software, installed something, ruined it, then I could just go back to this one and re-image my other card. So I've got a backup stored on my computer but I didn't have another card to put it on. I picked up a few more of these NRF24L01 Plus modules. Um, these are little 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, wireless modules. So um, uh, they're used to communicate with each other, so they're transceivers. And I, because they're such a pain to use with uh, sort of Arduino boards and stuff, I picked up some of these. No knife needed for this, thankfully, uh, which is, sort of a, a little breakout module and you just sort of pop it into the hole there and it's already got a, a regulator on there for 3.3 volts and you've got your pins broken out in a straight line. Now it's not breadboard friendly because the pins are on the top there. I wish they sort of put them on the bottom, that would have been a lot more useful. However, that's, uh, that's the way it is. So. It will just make development a little bit easier. I'm just going to be using these for a few little projects to learn rather than to um, to show you a finished project. I just want to be able to uh, uh, learn a few more techniques, specifically with programming and with um, with communication. I picked up some more LEDs. These are 1206 LEDs. You can see them; they're all in their little packaging at the moment. So there's a hundred in each pack. We've got some green ones. So I hope that's green. It says G on the packet. And we've got some here that are orange. Now this is gonna be, oh, and we've got some resistors, 470 ohm resistors. That's pretty high, but I don't want them to use a lot of current. Um, and I'm gonna be using it in a clock, sort of. I'm waiting on um, some real-time clock chips. I can't remember exactly what they are. They're Dallas chips, though, I think. Um, and I've got myself an AT Mega 328 here. Uh, that I've ordered from AliExpress. It was only about a pound, so it was quite cheap to get one of these. And we're going to be designing a new board. So I'll do a little live stream on the design of that because I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Now we're getting to the ones I haven't yet opened. So let's tear these ones open. I don't really know what they all are. Uh, okay, this one is some more 470 ohm resistors. I wasn't aware that I'd bought any more. Oh yeah, I remember. So I've been running out of these jumper wires. I find these really, really useful uh, for prototyping on a breadboard. I hate having to cut wire to a certain length to use them. So I picked up a bunch of these. Um, they come in various different lengths. They're really easy to shove into a breadboard and out they've got sort of these uh, little uh, bits, aglets on the end there, so they're really useful. Um, these were really cheap actually, they were about um, £1.65 for uh, the 65 in each, so that's 130, <laughs> 130 of those. I'll probably tear, can't I? Uh, what's this? Ah yes, okay. These are little short micro USB cables. Now because I'm using the Raspberry Pi, uh, I want to have little short cables 
to connect it when I'm using that robot that you saw in another video. And when you have these cables that aren't for data, you want them to be as short as possible so that you don't lose any power through the cable. So short charging cables are ideal for that scenario. And the last one, um, again, I haven't, haven't needed to use the knife really. <laughs> that's what this was. Okay. Um, so this one didn't have anything on the front that really identified it. It just had a return address. I didn't know what it was, so I hadn't opened it yet. But this is uh, the Pi Zero. This has come from uh, Pi Maroni or Pim Maroni. I don't know how to say it. Uh, but it's it's quite cheap. It's £10 for this kit. So this is um, the the Pi itself in the little uh, little sort of shielded bag. It's also got the micro HDMI to uh, full size HDMI little adapter. We've got the, the sort of pin header that will go straight onto the board. Is that actually a, that's a one, one to one representation of the board there. And uh, they've given us a nice little pin out. Uh, and they've got some shields too, so that could be useful in the future. So let's have a look. So it's I wasn't aware actually that the Pi was a single core. I didn't know that. So let's pull it out. There we go. It is actually a one-to-one -one representation. So that's the Pi Zero. What I really like about the Pi Zero is that um, it's such a small form factor that you could easily and cheaply design boards to sit on top. Um, and the main bit being cheaply really because that board size is so small, getting a PCB manufactured at OSH Park or at um, Dirty PCBs or, or any of those, those kind of companies, it's actually going to be pretty good value. If you're going to be designing for the larger versions, then it might cost a bit more. But if you're doing it for this, then really you just want it to cover the entire top area there and stand off a little bit. So I'm really liking this. All right, well, that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching.